Hi, I'm Stavros. Good morning and welcome to the FTMTA show here in Punchestown in County Kildare in Ireland. I'm going to be taking you on a full tour of the show here. We've got a bunch of farm machinery. We've got this huge New Holland combine harvester and I'm to meet up with a guy called Charles who's going to be taking me on a full tour of this combine and letting me know what it's all about. You want to see a big combine? You're going to see it right here in this video, guys. Let's go. Okay, I'm joined by Charles Hutchinson. He's going to take us on a full tour of the New Holland. So Charles, what Hello. can you tell me about this well, massive machine? Welcome to the New Holland Combine here at the FTMTA show. As, as you said, I'm Charles Hutchinson from Armstrong Machinery. We're a New Holland dealer since 1976. So what we have here is a CX 8.70. It's our six walker, straw walker machine, conventional combine. And it's fitted with a seven and a half meter, 25 foot, very feed header. A very feed header means that the knife on the header can hydraulically from the cab move in and out um, for different crop types and crop lengths. So for example, an oilseed rape or tall crops, you'd, you'd move it out to, so as the crop has a chance to fall down and underneath the auger. And on shorter crops like spring barley, you can bring the knife, retract the knife back in. Um, moving around the combine then. <laughs> I don't think people will realize on camera, Charles, just how massive this machine is. <laughs> yeah, it's a big machine, it's all right. Huge. Yeah, it is a big machine, absolutely. Yeah, I've no, I, I don't think I've been beside anything this big before in terms of fair machinery, but yeah, so what else can you say? So, uh, the, and the, the crop no. then, the transit of the crop uh, yeah. is into the, into the straw elevator, which on a New Holland combine has uh, four rows of chains, uh, three rows of elevator bars, and that, that delivers the crop directly into the drum. Right. The New Holland boasts the uh, the largest drum on the market at 30 inches in diameter with 10 rasp bars um, and then we, we run a, a four drum um, threshing scenario with a beater, a rotary separator and a straw flow beater. Right. Um, the rotary separator is a New Holland patent going back to 1970s and uh, right. it's proved very good in Irish climate for separation of the grain from the, from the straw mat. And you have a 12 and a half thousand litre grain on, tank. on this particular one yeah. we can have a 12 this particular one is eleven and a half thousand litre grain All tank right. on this particular model um with an unloading speed of about 110 litres per second oh. <laughs> 110 litres a second yeah, guys so yeah <laughs> you want to make sure the trailer is under you when you press the button <laughs> yeah that's some amount Absolutely. of power and and charles what sort of engine are we talking like yeah in new holland in new holland i suppose they're, they're, they're lucky as a combine manufacturer they're lucky that they have um iveco um FPT Fiat powertrain behind them so right. they can produce and build and design their own engines to suit their own machines so this combine is fitted with a with a Corsair 9 right. 375 horsepower engine um, and and the advantage of having a, the, the engine uh, in-house built is that the, the mapping of that engine a combine is unique that it runs at 2100 revs all day long so right. you need your power at up there around 2000 or 2050 so there's no point in the development max power at 1700 because we're never going to lug it but down that far because we'll have lost shaft speed right so i get you. it's 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 mapped to, to do exactly its purpose in a combine harvester so like a completely different rpm say to a truck absolutely what a, what a yeah truck would be running on lugging down low yeah yes. and it, it needs to develop it as it goes up through this combine will sit at the one rpm from 10 o'clock in the morning right through till Till, <laughs> till the guy can't take it anymore. Yeah, that <laughs> yes. night, yeah, yeah. So um, we have a self-leveling cleaning shoe in the combine. All right. And by, by that, I mean that this combine has a chassis within a chassis. Right. So on the side of a slope, the, the grain pan, mm -hmm. which is the preparation tray, the pre-sieve, our top sieve, our lower sieve, and our fan housing, and all the, all the returns augers and the clean grain augers that go along with it actually level on the side of a slope within, within the combine itself. So yeah. um, the cleaning part of that combine is running on, on level the whole time to give it optimum performance. Yeah. So, so Charles, you're about 6'4", are you? I'm 6'5", yeah. 6'5", yeah, look, yeah, and yeah. Look, look at the size of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's machine, making right, Charles yeah. look small standing beside this. But Charles, is there, is there anything at the rear here you want yeah, to show us? Uh, this, this, being a straw yeah. walker combine, there's another unique feature that New Holland have in that the, the straw walkers are variable speed. Hmm. Um, and they're, and they're, they're, the, the brain behind it is linked up to an inclinometer, which will increase the speed of the straw walkers if you, as you go down a slope and decrease them on the flat and further decrease them then on, a, on an increase. So as you're holding the straw mat, to shake the, the last of the grain out of it for longer. Yeah. The limiting factor of any straw walker combine is, is your grain loss across the straw and, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to push the limits uh, the whole time to give you better output. Um, this is a two wheel drive model, it can be coupled with a f powered rear axle, hydraulically driven four wheel drive. Yeah. It's got chaff spinners here uh, oh. to spread the chaff out the full width of the, of the 25 feet. 
Right. Um, so you don't get a, a, a crop mat or a chaff mat on the ground with, the, with, with slugs and that will, will, will thrive on. Oh, um, right. Six rows of knives on the chopper, uh, which give you a nice chi fine chop of straw then, and, and spread it out, disperse it out across the ground evenly as well. Right. And Charles, what sort of money are we talking about for the tyres, like front and rear tyres on these machines? I'm not in the tyre game, uh, but I suppose you're, you're, we're fitted on 870 Michelins on the front there. They're probably 5,000 euros a piece, those tyres there. 5,000 the yeah, a piece? Yeah, the, the front tyres on them there. <laughs> oh my God. The machine itself there, the list price of that machine is 372,000. 372,000? Plus fat, yeah. Wow. Another unique feature in the combine as well is that... Um, the returns, everybody, everybody's familiar with, with returns. It's, it's part heads and, and, and crop that hasn't been trashed out correctly. It's not returned back in on the drum. It's, it's retreshed on its own separate system on both sides of the combine and put back in on the grain pan. Right. Uh, it's another a, a huge advantage that New Holland have. It's just, <laughs> it's just massive. I can't, just can't get over the size of it, Charles. But Charles, we'll hop inside and just go Absolutely, down through, yeah. through some of the controls. But... Um, how wide did you say this was again? Uh, seven and a half meter, 25 feet. Yeah, 25 yeah, feet. Yeah, which would be a, a pretty standard. People are reluctant to go much bigger than that on the header size because the, the row of straw then is too hard to manage and, yeah. and, and to get it fit to bail. Yeah, so uh, we'll hop in. So, oh, there's people inside already. Yeah, so. can you blame them? <laughs> <laughs> it's attracting some amount of attention. Absolutely. All right. we'll so yeah, there, we'll no? wait until they're out and then we'll hop inside. Absolutely. Okay, let's hop inside. Uh, it's a bit higher up than a truck, guys. <laughs> it's a lot higher up. But uh, look, we've got two seats here. Yeah, uh, you can see the nice leather and trim on the, the seats. Um, it's a nice luxurious cab. This is what the, what's oh. known in, the, in New Holland terms as the Harvest Suite cab. Yeah. Air conditioned, uh, Bluetooth ready. All right. Electric mirrors. And you've got your... And uh, a full array of LED work lights. Right. Yeah. And uh, Charles, what have we got down here? Okay, now in terms well, of I'll slip across yeah. then. So, yeah, we can turn on so the screen. We'll just turn on the screen now, and uh, yeah. whilst the screen is powering up, this is our main multi function handle. So, this, this handle then um, controls forward and reverse and our forward yeah. speed. Um, it's a force based handle, so uh, if you want to increase the speed, you increase it like that, and the combine will hold its speed and decrease the speed like that. You've got header up and down function, header tilting left to right function. Right. We have a resume. We have a resume to work function, a reel up and down, and reel fore and aft. The reel fore and aft with a, with a shift button at the back will then um, put the knife fore fore and aft as well. Right. Reel speed, our unloading auger in and out and on and off of the unloading auger, and then of course the emergency stop button. Then should should anything go wrong, which stops your header, your straw elevator, and and your unloading it uh, instantly. So on our main screen here. We have our loss monitors across our straw walkers, our sieves, and then also it, it'll give us a reading of returns so we can, we can gauge where our bottom si sieve is according to returns. Um, th th many functions you can do in the combine, I mean, you can go in and you can go into a your ACS and select your crop type and the, and the combine will adjust its, its drum speed, its concave clearance, um, uh, top sieve, bottom sieve, fan, um, according to, to a book value and you can fine tune it then after that and save it. Um, so as you have you have your crop setting saved then. Right. Um, and Charles, all of these controls. Okay. Is it looks it looks quite complicated. Yeah. So y y the engagement of the main threshing mill of the combine is on this here. Um, another unique feature to New Holland is you're not you're not bringing a belt into tension there and taking up a drive through a belt. All belts are under tension. It's done through an oil immersed clutch. So it's very gentle, very smooth, and uh, longevity of it. Um, I would say it's probably um, uh, s maintenance free. Right. Header engagement is on this one. Yeah. Um, all our chopper functions are on this here then. So if, if we're chopping straw, then we can widen our row of chop, our narrower row of chop, or go left to right if we'd have crosswind on our row of chop. Yeah. So you can, you can direct where you want the, 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 the chop uh, out the back. Our throttle is simple here. Minimum revs or maximum revs. Right. Nothing too complicated there. And We've these, different header memory yeah. functions. And then across here then, of course, we have um, uh, drum speed, which... Yeah can be automated or we can we can manually adjust it there so if you make a manual adjustment you get a pop-up screen yeah. which which immediately the operator can see what speed he's at concave clearance our fan speed plus and minus and our top sieve and lower sieve can be adjusted here yeah. on the move gears are on this as a four-speed transmission oh, uh, yeah. hydrostatic transmission so you know you'd normally uh, i suppose harvest in second second gear and mm. and you'd be on the road in third and fourth and um, park brake is there and that's open and closing the, the grain lids. All right, okay. And then you can automate the, the, the real speed 
um, if you get a real, spe real speed that matching your forward speed, you can press it and then it'll synchronize. So if you increase your forward speed, your real your intake will increase as well in right. proportion. Yeah. So you can see how high up we are, guys. Here. And we've a lovely sloped floor <laughs> in front of us as well. So we've a yeah. great view down into the crop going into the front of the combine. And this box down here, that's just a toolbox. This tool is just box, a toolbox. I just yeah. put it up. That, that should be mounted down on the yeah. side of the header. But oh, yes. being at a show, I'd say it yeah. wouldn't be there unless it was locked away in the cab. Yeah. Um, and then behind us here on the, on the window, then we, you, can, you can get a direct look into the grain tank. Uh, oh, yeah. A huge, huge grain tank. Yeah. Um, You've got probably storage nine, here. Probably well. nine and a half tonne of wheat that tank will, will hold in real terms. Right, okay. Yeah. And you've you've a nice bit of storage, and you've got yeah. some you've got some cool storage over your head here, the re refrigerated storage as well. Oh yeah. Up here, the whole minerals and and uh, <laughs> bits and pieces for a long working day. Um, but the visibility up here is fantastic. As absolutely well. super visibility. Yeah. Ah, yeah. There's a f full uh, panoramic glass with with very very narrow pillars. Then yeah. so you've got a you've got a great view all around. Yeah. That's great, Charles. We'll, uh, we'll just hop outside there for a minute. Okay, Charles, thank you very much for taking me on a full tour of the Combine. You're very welcome, man. If you want any more information on this one, the CX 8.70, or any other Combine in the New Holland range, don't hesitate to, con to contact me in Armstrong Machinery. We're, uh, we're based out at the Five Roads at Lusk in North Dublin, um, or the other uh, harvester dealer, m and Machinery in Cashel. Thank you very much. Thanks, Charles. Okay, Sang Yong have also a bunch of cars here. I'm just going to quickly walk through them and show you. We have the brand new Muso here. Now this has a towing capacity of three and a half ton. It features a 2.2 litre diesel engine with 178 horsepower. And you can also carry 700 kilos in the back of the Muso as well. So yeah, so a total combined towing weight of 5,880 kilos. So that's with the uh, Muso and your trailer behind. So um, that is your Sangyong Muso. Then we move on to the commercial end of the Sangyong range. This is the Rexton. So it's up to yourself whether you want to have the crew cab and carry stuff in the back or else you want to have all your stuff in the back of the Rexton. So this also features a 2.2 litre diesel engine. So 178 horsepower. And it's quite spacious here in the back, plenty of space in the back of these. I'm told there is more space than a Toyota Land Cruiser. Yeah, and then we have the Tivoli. These feature a 1.6 litre diesel engine with 115 horsepower. You can also get them in a 1.6 litre petrol with 125 horsepower for the Tivoli. So this one can also be purchased in commercial, so you can get the seats taken out of this and you can get a commercial version, but we'll just have a quick look in the rear there. Quite nicely finished in the rear. And that is the smaller version of the Tivoli. So as I said, a 1.6 litre diesel or 1.6 litre petrol. Then we move on to another Muso here. Now you can get a Muso in a Grande version that is 40 centimetres longer than this if you want to have even more space in the back. And we do have a socket there as well an electrical socket at the back of the Muso. And then we have the big Rexton here. This is your uh, big family SUV. So these have a starting price of around 32 and a half thousand, but this one here on display is up to 60,000 euro. So uh, yeah, they are, they are quite expensive, but they are coming with an awful lot of features. So you have your traffic sign recognition, lane departure warning, and your autonomous emergency braking system and uh, fully automatic gearbox as well. So uh, that one, as I said, coming in at 60,000 and starting from 32,500 for your Rexton. So that's how it looks on the Sang Young stand at the FT MTH show. Okay, we've got a smaller New Holland combine here, the FR920 Forage Cruiser. Then I'll swing over to the Crone. This is the big X780. 
and you see the header there at the front, the Easy Flow 300S. And you can see the cab as well, it can be adjusted for different heights of uh, maze. So uh, you can adjust the height of the cab there. But uh, there it is, the Big X 780. Okay, so I've had my coffee and I'm joined now by James and Adam and they're going to talk to me about their new app, Ibcos. So James, can you explain to us all about this app and how it benefits engineers going onto farm sites and servicing tractors and farm machinery? Yeah, certainly. So the, the new app is a complementary module that fits in with our uh, gold system. 80% uh, of dealers uh, work with Ibcos, certainly in the UK and in Ireland, and we've got a pedigree of um, 40 years within the industry, and we're developing and investing in our business uh, all the time. Um, but the new gold service application, what it does is it allows dealers to send their uh, representatives onto farm, and they're able to record uh, all the information from a job, take signatures from the customer, and send that electronically back to the dealer for efficiency and easy uh, tracking of uh, the jobs that are being done. But so James, you can show us here, Adam has the app opened and we're just going to go down through it just to show you all how it works. So you can explain okay. to us there, Adam. We'll, we'll hand over to Adam. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the front page of the app shows a technician what jobs they've got on today and what jobs they've got on tomorrow. So this is determined by their manager back at the depot. Okay, they can also search for jobs if they want to find them, so they can search by job number, by whole good, by customer, or by job description, so they might, that oil leak that you need to fix for Mr. Smith, they can just search for that. So when they found the job they want to do, they've simply got to select it, it gives them the description of the job, it gives them the instructions that the office want them to carry out, it then gives them the delivery address, so if that's different from the customer's address, it gives them the contact they've got to see there, it gives them whole good information, ability to put in the serial number, it then gives them the option to actually run through a checklist, so um, what have I been asked to look at on this machine? So that could just be for an oil service, it could be changing the filters, it could be yeah. doing checks, or if it's a warranty job, it could be looking at what was the complaint, what was the cause, what's the correction. Hmm. It gives them the option to look through a part of scratch pad to record what parts they've used on the job, to get oh, customers' yes. signatures, so same as your DPD man, yeah. and then to record time itself, if they're travelling to a job, they've just got to hit the car button at the bottom, it starts recording travel time. When they get to site, they hit the spanner to say, I've started labour. And when they complete their labour, they've just got to hit the tap button again, and they can put their story on. So they can do this by typing it on, or they can do it by dictating the story to the app itself. Right. And so they get sent back to the dealership. Yeah. And Adam, like, how many dealers are using this app? Um, I believe at the moment we've got around just under 500 technicians who are using the app at the moment. But it is a, this has only come out in the last three months, so it's going from strength to strength at the moment for us. Yeah. I think the largest dealer we've got using at the moment has got 15 depots. 15 depots on the one app? On the one app with technicians. Wow. So that's an awful lot of information passing through the one app. It's fantastic. So I say the most we've had it cope with at the moment is 4,500 jobs. So. <laughs> 4,500 jobs on the one app. On the one app. Wow, so we can hold an awful lot of information. So it's got a lot of retention in there, a lot of capacity. Yeah, so check them out, guys. We've got James, we've got Adam from Ibcos. Check out the app on the App Store. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, I'm now here on the fence stand and I'm joined by Sean Gorman. He's going to be showing us all around this fabulous fence tractor here. Wait till you see this, guys. So Sean, what can you tell us about this fabulous Fent here in front of me? Hi Star Ross, uh, this unique tractor, yeah, it's a Fent 943 Vario MT. Mm. Um, not a popular tractor yeah. on this island. These tractors, track tractors, they're more commonplace, places like Eastern Europe, the Eastern Seaboard of England and North America. Yeah. Um, that said, um, this was formerly a, a Challenger tractor, ca evolved from Caterpillar to Challenger and out to Fent. There would be still a number of these um, older, o the older generation of these tractors in the Irish market. Yeah. Um, this is the, the newest incarnation. It's unique in that it has a Fent Vario, so it's a, an automatic transmission, which is, which is unusual in a track tractor. Um, it has a 7.8 litre Agco power engine. Right. Um, it is 430 horsepower on tap. 430, okay. 430 horsepower. Yeah. Um, this 
tractor is f full full auto steer. It steers itself. Um, it's got a fin cab, fin technology, which yeah. many customers in this country will will be familiar with. Um, yeah, it's grabbing the, some amount of attention, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's, as I say, it's it's, it's unique unique yeah. on on this island. Um, it's unladen weight. It's a, it's a big tractor. Unladen weight is just over 15 ton. 15 so, ton. so this is physically a big machine. Um, and just on the front here, Sean, we have this your ballast here. So we've 810 kilos, and each of these are 45 kilos each. Correct. Yeah. So you can pull well, them off. Well, yeah. what you have is um, with a tractor like this, you're pulling big implements on the back. So if the typical the type of cultivation equipment you'd have on the rear of this tractor would be maybe 8, 10, 12 meter implements on the rear. Yeah. So what you need is you need obviously heavy, heavy ballast to um, counteract the weight on the rear of the machine. Yeah, so we're just going to walk around and show you inside the cab here shortly. But we'll just walk around the rear, Sean, because the rear, <laughs> you don't really realise how wide these tractors are until you get around the back. But... Um, well, it certainly if, looks very unusual. I've not seen one of these before, ever. <laughs> yeah, well, if you look at the track system, the, 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 the idea of tracks is it's obviously it's low compaction and it's in terms of getting the massive power. They get to get 430 horsepower. To get that horsepower into the ground, um, tracks is, is a very efficient way of getting power onto the ground. So just to give you an idea of the width, there is my hand <laughs> and the width of the track so and Sean you can drive this on the road yes yeah you can yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely yeah and they, they they're quite maneuverable on the road um, that said the the farms where these generally end up are big um, tracks of land where they they wouldn't be typical tractors on the road but absolutely they can yeah yeah and would it be comfortable on the road or absolutely this yeah. ca this cab traditionally um, these tractors were not but no but this particular tractor is it does have cab suspension right, so it actually yeah. is, it's a very comfortable it's very comfortable on the road and comfortable in the field as well going going across a field that's um, maybe that has heavy ruts in it yeah. it's, it's quite comfortable and Sean what sort of money are we talking for a tractor like this um, What's price for this range? for this type of spec and horsepower you'd need, it would be somewhere north of 300,000 euros plus fat. Wow, that's a lot of money, but... Um, but it's a lot of tractor. Yeah, it's a lot of tractor, all right. You certainly won't be getting stuck in any fields with this. Uh, I'd love to see it um, in, in, in a plowing championship. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'd say it um, would fairly win, all right. But I think, I think um, if, if you like, we'll take a look in the cab. Oh yeah, we'll take a look inside now yeah. and we'll go down and we'll also show you this tractor, which is Tractor of the Year, 2019, another Fent. We'll show you that shortly. Let's hop inside, Sean, and we'll go down through the features of this Fent. So you hop up here, um, just in front of the tracks, up onto the Fent 943 Vario MT. And uh, yeah, we have the two seat layout. So Sean, we'll just have a quick look around and uh, just go down through the features of this fent yeah i suppose um so you have all the modern features this um yeah. what this tractor has is actually very similar to um uh, people in this country who, who drive fent tractors would be very familiar with this cab yeah. the actual the the workings the controls is very similar to the the smaller tractor we look at in a minute right. which is 138 horsepower this is 430 but the actual controls are the same um the big, you know, look, it's a comfortable place to, to for a long, a long day's work. Leather seats. Um, yeah, you've got plenty of foot area here as well. Climate control. Yeah. Um, this tractor will steer itself, so in essence, it's full auto steer. Right. It's a full GPS. Um, so basically, the operator is he he does not physically steer the tractor. Um, he just has to keep an eye on the controls and the implement on the back. Yeah. When this tractor is in operation. It, it will be generally operated maybe in cruise control a set speed yeah. at set engine revolutions per minute um, so it'll be it'll be set up to suit the implement on the back that's the foot accelerator All right. um, you have a brake and a clutch but again you don't in well you use the brake obviously you need to stop but the yeah. actual clutch is just to start the tractor itself yeah so you've got all these features here on the screen 
Uh, we won't we won't take that off. We leave that for the first we, owner. We leave the plastic <laughs> on it, yeah. <laughs> for the owner of this. Okay, we're going to hop over now and have a look at the Tractor of the Year 2019. Okay, Sean, we will move on to the Tractor of the Year. Okay, moving away from the, the track tractor, the, the 943 um, Vario, moving to a tractor more popular in the Irish, Irish market. This is the Fint 313. Um, I suppose the reason we have it here at the show is um, this tractor was voted Tractor of the Year 2019 and um, Best Utility Tractor. Um, and that's a, that, that was a European, a European award. Um, these tractors, obviously it's, it's 138 horsepower. It's a popular power bracket in the Irish market. Um, this tractor um, would have a fence, fence owner known Vario, so the automatic transmission, again, similar to the big tractor, similar to the track tractor. Um, front loader, obviously, for, um, which is, you know, popular areas where this tractor went up on dairy farms, beef farms. Um, it also has in the cab, and we'll look at it in a minute, it has a very similar technology to what's in the big tractor, the track tractor we looked at earlier. And that's one thing you see with a Fent tractor. The, whether you're driving a 70 horsepower vineyard tractor or the 943 um, track tractor, they drive the same way. The technology is very similar and all. So there's, there's a, a commonality in each, in, in each of them. So if you want, we'll, we'll take a look in the cab. Okay, let's hop inside the Fent 313 Vario. That is your Ad Blue tank. It's a 30 liter Ad Blue tank. And we have a 200 liter diesel tank there as well. So yeah, quite easy to hop up, uh, three steps. So Sean, hopping into the Fent here, what can you show us? Yeah, I suppose, um, yeah. look at it again, it's, it's a lovely comfortable environment to work in. Um, similar to the bigger tractor we looked at earlier, the, a lot of the um, controls are quite similar. Mm -hmm. um, again, the fact it's the automatic transmission, it will, it, as I mentioned earlier, will drive in the same way. Obviously we've got the front loader in front, and we have the curved windscreen. Um, that's obviously from a point of view of um, when, when you're u lo using the loader at, at full height, you, you have a good view of the loader itself. Um, and, you know, otherwise that, that's, pr that's pretty much it, yeah. It's a nice yeah. place to spend a hard day's work. Yeah. Sean, thank you very much for showing me around the stand. And more Sean, if anyone else wants more information about the fence, who do they contact or where is your dealership? Yeah, we've um, fent with seven dealers on the island of Ireland and um, they're all, all hardworking businesses. And, um, yeah. you know, we, um, we're, we're always will, willing and trying to um, take, on, take on new people, get more people into these tractors. Great, Sean, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, I've got these bunch of guys here. Who have I got quickly? Hello, my name is Jane Nolan from Burris Carlow. All right, and? My name is Carl Lawler, Burris County Carlow. And? My name is Aaron Dyer, Burris County Carlow. Oh, yeah. Carl Dyer, Burris County Carlow. And I just want to ask these guys, John what's your favorite tractor? John Deere! On the class stand, I'm joined by David Thornton. He's going to be taking us around some of their machinery. So, David, how are things? Not too bad, thanks. Yourself? What can you show us today on your stand? So, welcome to the class stand at the FTMTA Farm Machinery Show. Um, we're trying to have one of each product here at the show. Um, starting us off on the stand here, we have the Scorpion Telehandler. Uh, this machine here is a Scorpion 736, 7 meter reach, 3.6 ton uh, lift capacity. Uh, this machine here is running Deitz, a Deitz engine. Um, moving on from the Scorpion, yeah. if we come around here to the left, we have um, this Ariane 650, which has um, a front and rear mower combination wrapped around it. Yeah. Um, this, the Ariane 650, semi power shift transmission, 185 horsepower. Um, 12 inch touchscreen terminal up in the cab and the mowers are knocking down about six meters of grass for every every pass and what sort of horsepower are we talking here David? 185 185 185 okay. yeah horsepower. and then we move on to the, <laughs> the big jaguar they call this the jaguar david yes 
Yeah, this is a Jaguar. This yeah. is our uh, forage harvester. So the um, yeah, this Jaguar here is a is a 980. This is a bit of a special machine. It's been uh, it's been wrapped in black for the the customer customer request. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah. And what the, sort of power are we talking here? The David? 980 is running a, a Man V12 engine, uh, giving us like 884 horsepower. A V12. Um, <laughs> Man V12. Right. Yeah. And then we have this one, David. Another. So this one here is the Axion. Um, this is an 800 Axion, 205 horsepower. Right. Um, yeah, semi-power shift transmission as well. Yeah. Um, Guy. They are big though. I mean, I'm standing here, I'm six foot two, and my head is only coming up to about here. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of scale, guys, uh, on these big tractors. And David, have we, what have we got out in front there? So out in front, we have a slightly smaller machine, Arian 510. That one's uh, 125 horsepower, mm -hmm. four cylinder engine. Um, it's a, a loader ready tractor, so fitted with loader brackets um, and pipe work and things at the front to run a loader. Yeah. Um, popular model for a livestock farmer, um, smaller tractor, nice and manoeuvrable, easy to get around tight farmyards and things. And David, um, all these buttons at the back here? Yeah, so these yeah. buttons are your external controls. On this one here you have your external linkage up and down, um, your PTO engagement, power takeoff, and your PTO disengagement here. All right. And all these, uh, just for hooking up your trailer at the back, you've all the points there, look. Yep, so there are your hydraulic outlets, there your, we call them spool valves, um, so just plug your hydraulic services from your implement into there and we can supply oil um, out through those. That's great, and you've got another one over there as well, David. Yes, so that one there, um, smaller tractor again, again, um, heading, steering more towards the livestock farmer, the tighter farmyards and that, loader tractor, multi-purpose machine, that's an Arian 430 over there. And then just one last look. At the Jaguar. <laughs> um, yeah, don't confuse this with anything to do with the JLR group. Uh, this is just the Jaguar, the class. But yeah, that's it. David, thank you very much for showing me around the stand. No worries. Thanks, and, Stavros. Uh, the show will be back here again in two years' time, is that right? Yeah, um, so 2021, the show here is run every, every two years, so it's, yeah, pretty good um, format. It means there's always something new. For yeah. people to see, it kind of yeah, keeps everyone everyone a bit more interested in it. Um, and yeah, if anyone wants to find out any more about any of the class machines here in the stand, please uh, contact your local dealer or look us up online class.com. Um, all the information is there. Um, thanks very much, David. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, no man. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, I'm now joined by Michael O'Grady. We're on the Abbey Machinery stand, and Michael, you're going to take me on a quick tour as to what you have here on display this year. Anyway, you're very welcome to the Abbey Machinery Stand. Thanks. Uh, we have an array of machines on display here, so we make 86 different models of machines. Right. So we have a few machines here on display. So what we have on show here is a 2750 tanker. It's, it's, a, it's one of 38 different models that we make. It's a, it's a mid-range model on a single axle with an 800 tire, um, which I'll explain a little bit in a minute. So what you're looking at here at my feet is our what we call a tri -app try as in it does three applications the first thing is 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 it is its vertical trail and shoe which basically means that it engages the soil as the machine is drawn along it engages the soil parts the leaves and allows the slurry to come down through these pipes down through this rubber boot and fall on the ground mm. so what that means is number one the slurry is below the is below the grass which means it's not, there's no smell. Oh, I get you, yeah. Number two, there's no, there's no contamination of the grass, mm. so the animals can go back in and graze the field within a week. Right. And even better than that, there's less carbon emissions, so it's actually better for the atmosphere. All right, so it's okay. a win-win-win. So um, that's that piece of machinery, Michael. So, and so very quickly, it's, it's seven and a half meters wide. Okay? And this piece here? Yeah, so this is the distributor. Yeah. So it's, it's just a, a cut-out version of oh, what's yes. an, an thing. So the yeah. slurry comes in here, there's plates and knives in here to chop the slurry to pump it evenly out through these pipes. Oh, yeah. So no matter what pipe you are in there, you're getting the same amount of slurry. All right, okay. Okay. And we're just going to move on to these uh, diet feeders. Okay, Michael. so we, so we have yeah. two different models here. This is for a smaller farmer. This will feed about 90 cows in one feed. This is for a larger unit right. here on the right hand side. So inside it, you can see there's a single auger in here. Yeah. 
So it's a nice low auger to keep the horsepower requirements low for the farmer. Here at the bottom, these are blades uh, for specifically for chopping roots. So if the oh farmer yeah. wants to feed potatoes or beet, it needs to be chopped down to about the size of the golf ball. So as the beet f falls in here, it chops it down and it makes it safe for the animal to eat it. Mm. And then it can be mixed in with the feed. This one here is a twin auger feeder. So twin means it's two augers. So the feed will fall down here and disperse between both augers and mix. The right. most important thing when you're mixing the feeds is that, is that there's an even mix and it feeds it out well. And you'll notice there's two doors then for feeding it out yeah. to make it convenient for a farmer depending on which yard he's going into. And Michael, this is just a rubber flap that comes down here, is it? Just purely for safety. Yeah. Purely for safety. So, so that rubber flap is down while it's in use so the feed can fall out there and the, so the farmer, nobody can put their hand in there to, uh, to get hurt. And Michael, what have we got out in front here? Yeah, so this is a topper. Yeah. So it's a, it's a nine foot topper that trails offset f f to one side of, of the um, of the uh, of the tractor. So the tractor wheels. This is not driving on the same line as the tractor wheels. Oh yes, of course. Um, it's got it's got angled knives underneath it, and basically what that means is, it, is it's mulching the grass as well. So when it cuts the grass, it's mulching it. The whole idea is it cuts the grass down to about five centimeters. Nice and even, so there's a lovely even regrowth, so the cattle will thrive even better when they go back into the field. Right, so Michael, if anyone wants any more information about Abbey Machinery, where do they go to? Yeah, they can go onto our website, www.abbeymachinery.com, or they can just phone us uh, on, on, on the phone number, the phone number will be there as well. And we've a, we have a load of dealers all around the country, they're our partners, and they help us to sell and support the farmer after he buys it. That's great, Michael, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. So there is so much to see at this show. FTMTA, just so much equipment going on. I mean, the, the video could be hours long if it went down through all the equipment. But I'm joined here from, on the Castle Agri stand by Dermot Tobin. Dermot, how are you doing? Very good, thank you Stavros for coming to see our stand. We have a number of products here. We have swivel feathers, which we have 950 sold in Ireland. Uh, snow plows, uh, irrigation systems for water and vegetables. But here I am in front of the yeah. The swivel spreaders. Now these are completely different to a splash plate. They they create droplets, so the droplets go into the air and they keep the ammonia and the nitrogen inside the droplet. And everyone knows when the ammonia and the nitrogen inside the droplet, it can't get a mist into the air. It falls down the ground in a heavy shower of rain. So it doesn't contact, contaminate the grass. Yeah. You have faster regrowth. You can graze in half the time. You get more nitrogen value out of your slurry. And it's a super system, it does one and a half the width of a splash plate. Also, and Dermot, is this developed by Castle Agri? No, this is developed in Germany. They have 25,000 sold in Germany, Switzerland and Austria. I'm the sole agent from them for Ireland and England. Right. And we have over 900 sold. People are very happy with them. Uh, low emissions, very mm, practically no maintenance to run them. Yeah. And they can fit onto any tank. You don't have to add to the tank, we can fit it on the tank. You don't have to change your size of the tractor. So it has an awful lot of advantages for farmers throughout the country. It's very simple, it doesn't get blocked like uh, some of the other systems. So it's very farmer friendly and it's environmentally friendly as well. Your diesel usage is relatively about half compared to what you use with a trailing shoe or a dribble bar. And Dermot, you also have your snow plows. We have our snow plow that, that you saw Stavros in, in, at the Carrick yeah and then that's going well we have a number of those sold and we have a new road grader here that can for leveling cow roads right. and and so the cows won't get lame this rips the road it levels it yeah. you can you can put a, um, a camber on the road so that the water will run off it or you can have the fall going left or right but right. the important thing is to get the water so in one pass you can rip the road level it and put the camber on it we also have a, um, a bale grab here that can carry four round bales, as you see here, which is very fast and safe. The tines uh, stick into the bale, so you can shake, the, shake it with the tines in it. It will not fall, the bales will not fall off it. It's very safe. You can unload trailers really, really fast with this. Right. And uh, we have a number of swivel spreaders, duo swivel spreaders. We have a 24 meter one, the orange one there, Stavros. Yeah. This can work on tram lines. Oh, I see it there, yes. And it does a 100% even spread. Yeah. No lines in the field. So Dermot, thank you very much for showing me around your stand. You've put a big effort into displaying everything here. Yeah, well done. It's a, it's a pleasure, Stavros, yeah. any time. And thank you for coming to see us. Thanks, Dermot.
Okay, I'm now on the Anor Agri stand. I'm joined by John O'Donnell. John, can you tell us what equipment you have on your stand? Um, just here beside me is the Weaving GD4801 uh, direct drill. Uh, it's their latest model, which, in, which has the toolbar under the tank. It has a five ton capacity tank. Uh, it's a direct drill, which is designed to sow straight into uh, stubble. Uh, every kind of crop from oilseed rape through to barley, wheat, etc. and grass seeds. Um, it has an RDS Artemis control unit uh, which controls the, the seed, the seed rate and uh, it incorporates its own small seed um, slug pellet tank as well which can be calibrated directly through the, the computer as well. It also features a swivel front head uh, which allows for a much tighter turning circle and a cover on the tank as well uh, to keep to, to keep the moisture etc out. Um, it features the unique um, slanted disc on the weaving drill uh, with its swivel head which is, uh, has the best slot closing uh, on the market. Thank you very much John. Thank Thanks for showing me that. Just about wraps us up from this year's FTMTA show here at Punchestown in County Kildare. I just have one more tractor to show you. I have Liam and I have Chris standing beside the new Holland and this is a Centenario tractor so it's Fiat celebrating 100 years. Brilliant. Yeah it's a T5120 so the original Fiat um, 702 which was the first tractor was made was made in 1918. So we're celebrating 100 years of Fiat tractors. Fiat being important because the Fiat Group is the parent company of Case, New Holland, CNH, New Holland, Steyr. So this is, I suppose, the brand's way of showing where their loyalty lies with the New Holland being appreciated by the Fiat Group. So yeah. And have you ever heard of the Lamborghini Centenario tractor? You told me a little bit about it earlier, but until now I hadn't heard of one. Yeah. You can check that out on my channel guys from Top Marks nearly two years ago, the Lamborghini Centenario tractor with none other than Fabio Lamborghini, the nephew of Ferruzio, sitting on the tractor giving me an interview. Where would you get it? <laughs> so guys, thank you very much no from the New Holland stand. That is it. That is a wrap. FTMTA for 2019 is done. I hope you all enjoyed the video and I'll chat to you all again next weekend for another video. So until then, take care guys. Cheers! I'm joined by Adam and Charles. Adam and James. Adam and <laughs> joined by Adam and Charles. No. <laughs> I got it wrong again. James. James and, and it's, Charles. It's James, I'm James. James and that's Charles. I know, Adam. Oh, God. <laughs>